Needless to say, after riding into the village of uh, leprechauns and then announcing that they are going to be overwhelmed soon by a huge amount of fucking scorpion riding kobolds, the leprechauns lose their fucking minds. There's a lot of yelling and chaos and confusion right now. I asked the leader, do they have like oil and fire so we can throw oil on them and something like that? Ever since the rending, it hasn't worked like it used to, or at least so I'm told. I'm not pre-rending. Do you have any of that? I'll try to make it work. It can't work. Uh, they roll an extremely off chance of having things that don't work laying around. But we have some. They bring it to you. There is no way this can work. And even if it does, you won't know until it's too late. Or so they have, really badly. Like, they like bring out I, barrels of oil and shit. Yeah. We maybe like they use soak it, maybe the ground in a, in a line uh, so that they can't get to the village. But we eat this. I Don't suppose worry. surviving is important. They, yes. they, do as, they do as you say. They even get sticks and stuff and splash it on there. You're saying you can make the unburnable oil burn? Yes. They prepare the stuff in the distance. You hear the ominous clicking sound. It sounds like pachinko machines, but without the music. Okay. They're drawing closer. Huge line as they blacken the horizon coming this way. Well, blacken a small portion of the horizon. There's not all that many of them. So, sorry, I, Lord of the Rings today. It's just a fucking village of these bastards. And they come riding in. And eventually, it's almost to the point where the sides are ready to clash. And they're going to be, they go over the, the stuff because everybody knows that this won't burn. I'm going to try to make it burn. I want a fucking willpower times two to force it to burn. Willpower times one is better. A crit is, uh, then it fucking goes into a maelstrom of fire. So times two is your minimum for, oh shit, some of them get burned. And a lot of them get freaked. All right, I'm going to spend a skill five. Mm -hmm. This is called desperation, humans. I am a wizard, and I call upon the flame. I'll give you an R5 for that. You touch it to it a few times, it just sits there. It's like trying to burn olive oil with a match. It's just not uh, good. I'll spend a pause. <gasps> well, you lost so five of those still... five, but you still got plus five for your dramatic. That's one. Right. It puts out, Wait. The, it, it goes up your arm. And what the real it. fuck is up with these dice? It goes into your mouth and begins to suffocate you. Here we go. Two hours right. later. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm never going to fucking get new powers. <laughs> no problem. It lights up okay. It's not the maelstrom of fire you're really It's times hoping. one. Oh, is it? Oh, shit. I have a willpower 20. God damn. <sighs> no problem. I'll tell you what. Uh, roll... 3d or no 20 plus 2d 20 that's how many fuckers die in there i'm just kind of kobolds and mounts are with them type thing good luck d20 2d 20 plus 20 so if you roll maximum 60 of them fucking die instantly from your fiery death torch at minimum 22 die so 53 that's pretty pretty or yeah, uh, yeah, thirty-three total die. Got it. Cool. No problem. This is quite a fucking blow. The leprechauns cheer. They want to counterattack, but the flames are in the way, so they have to fucking wait. Meanwhile, this causes the kobolds to fucking rethink their life's choices. Now they they're here to stay. Kill the human or kill uh, the enemy. Yes. So a battle begins to get waged. Um, they have uh, uh, like slings and stuff. Or no, slings are shit on those. Little bows and arrows. 
Sure. Uh, they're, they're shooting back and forth and stuff. Pretty much uh, your party chooses to stay behind a wall and shit and wait for this because it's like little arrows and shit. Mm -hmm. Are you wanting to do anything to help with the battle or do you want to just hang out and be content that you just killed 33 motherfuckers? Um, I have that other weapon, the, the shitty... I have the, the light gun. I'll, I'll shoot the light gun. I'm not oh, going to shoot you, Rogers all over the view continually. Right. I'll blow up eventually. You you decide to play around with it. Which which light gun is this? Is this the Earth one? No, the Earth one had one shot left. The yes. other one, or was it water? Was it water based? I don't I don't remember I what the. I think it was air. I think it was air? air. Yeah. So like okay, so air based flavor like of thirty shots left or something. Thirty nine. I have it written down. Ah, good man. Okay, you got to find out how the gun works. Here's how it works. Round one, activate. It sucks one magic point and it goes and it makes a really loud whining noise. Okay. Totally not possible to sneak with one of these ready to go. After that, you can just shoot away with it and it does D8. Okay. That's, the, that's your basic piece of shit gun there. Okay. So sure, let's do, we'll do three combat rounds just to get a feel for how the battle's going. Okay. If you kick ass and kill three motherfuckers, I'll assume you're a death god. If you put the gun in your mouth and repeatedly pull the trigger, we'll know you're not. But uh, each each round that you d decide to shoot at them, some of them may shoot at you. And I'll give you D4 minus one people shooting at you. So okay. it might be zero. Zero is an acceptable result. So villains are first. You're shooting this round, I'm guessing. Yes. You stand up and immediately three of the little fuckers target you. That's the one. They attempt to shoot you with little itty bitty bows that do much less damage, but are still annoying as fuck. Miss, miss, miss. You are invulnerable, you think happily. Why didn't I just walk into the village and kill them? Now, next thing, you've never used light pistol before, right? Right. So your pistol skill is currently... What? What is your pistol skill? 72. No, no, right. I'm sorry, 92. God damn. Okay. Write a new skill in. Mm -hmm. Pistol. Light. Or, sorry, pistol uh, match attack. And its starting skill is 92 or whatever you said your pistol skill was. It will now build up separately from your pistol skill. Oh, okay. But it starts at the same. So if you suck with a regular pistol, then your life just sucks. But for you, neat. I can have two skills go up over 100 someday. So, and you got seven damage. He goes unconscious. That was a good round for you. Next round. So far, you're kicking ass. Heroes are first. Being melodramatic is approved. You get a fire first, and then uh, we'll see how many of them are attempting retaliation fire. Or you'd be melodramatic at them. No, I'll shot. I shoot at them. Go for it. You're seven negative. Point, or four points. Okay, no problem. You wound one of the little fuckers. And this round, two of them attempt pot shots at you. One of them killing himself in rage. How dare you? That's what happens when you attack me. You die. <laughs> I'm a wizard. <laughs> Next round. Heroes are first and get a total heal. If you were injured, you're not anymore. My one hit point comes back. <laughs> Hooray. Nothing's approved. Go ahead. Let's see how you do. Oh, by the way, if you were to yell zap as loud as you can in your house, that's how loud these are when they fire. Oh, damn. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is a lot quieter than a fucking ballistic pistol, but it's still noisy. Right. So you wound another one, and this round, nobody takes a shot at you because they don't want to die. So... In general, the battle goes pretty well. A lot of many leprechauns give their lives, but they do manage to get a good defeat of the kobolds. See how the kobolds' morale was. Eventually, their morale broke. About 30 of them dashed away on their scorpions and shit. All right, I'll do my best to doctor up the leprechauns. Give me a first aid roll at negative 20. If you succeed, then you pick up a new Got skill it. and learn. You pick up a new skill at Learn called uh, uh, Leprechaun uh, uh, 
by a leprechaun biology. I was thinking about doing leprechaun homeopathy, but that's just too weird. So, no problem. Yes, you you are quite useful. Yandun comes out, and for those that were like really close to death, he gives them little sips of red potion and shit, thus helping uh, the village endear itself to him just a wee bit. Afterward, uh, they dispatch several to hunt hunt for survivors and shit. Let me roll on their fucking track down routed enemy forces and kill them skill. I'll go with them if I can. Done. It's a bloodbath. <laughs> I was going to play a Sith 5. <laughs> okay. Give me a Sandy Roll versus uh, uh, War. Got it. You take one point toward Horrors of War or whatever it's called on the sheet. Okay. <laughs> The weird thing is, when you're op when you're operating and stuff on them, there was another one who kept uh, flipping between humor and maudlin. He's like, "Oh, make all this medicine? I sure don't. Someday this war is going to end." <laughs> no, back and forth. And you're like, "What is wrong with you?" The other ones tell you he's bipolar. So, ah. no problem. After that. And uh, the really super extra gory route, maybe five or ten that managed to survive or whatever, they ran off screaming into the fucking uh, desert. I chased them down. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a card. <laughs> <laughs> the other guys were ready to let him go, but you just wouldn't. So I killed them all. Mm -hmm. <sighs> After that, <laughs> God damn, that's funny. Um, you go back to their village, they produce an ass load of whiskey. You're drinking out of a fucking keg. <laughs> Because it's what they can do for a cop. And give me a dancing role. They want you to dance with them. I do so. You're river dancing with the leprechaun now. You feel cheap and used. <laughs> um, you get a check in um, uh, two new skills. Dances of the leprechaun. And songs of the leprechaun. They teach you their dancing and songs. After dances of the leprechaun, parentheses, river dance. That night, you guys explore many, many Irish stereotypes. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, the great. The great Yandun becomes uh, intoxicated and then dances like a fiend. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, he, he, he told you at least eight times before he went off to go to bed that you were the greatest. Give me an alcohol tolerance, dr alcohol slash drug tolerance roll. I got it. They think that you are like a god. Or at least can drink like one. The... The uh, leprechauns are very happy with you as you have at last managed to break the deadlock. The other two, uh, the man and the woman who are mercenary guards, they're starting to warm to you. They bring you drinks and shit like that and tell you, I guess you're an okay one for a monster. Uh... They assume you're some sort of shape-shifting horror from beyond, but they're, you are there shape-shifting horror from beyond mm. yeah so um right make a note that the uh uh leprechaun village here is in 
Victorville is extremely well disposed toward you. They then spend uh, a couple hours the next day. They started like really fucking, they started when it was still dark so that you guys could sleep in and then leave at first light, getting your fucking mule across their little itty bitty kid sized bridges. And that day you do a one day forced march all the way back to uh, Bar Barstow along the great route 66 um yeah it, it used to be owned by cobalt now it's abandoned <laughs> you, guys, you guys camp out there um probably like close to the outskirts by the little place there um yandun and uh uh actually no um the guards, the guards say they'll guard you and do it if you want to look around for anything useful. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll search the place since they all ran off into the night, so it's not like they... I loot. You find nothing useful. <laughs> unless you well, want I kind garbage. of figured, honestly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, anyway, then I... Yes, apparently this is turning out to be a little weirder than you thought, you're thinking. Anyway, then uh, the next day you go back on the Holy Route 66 and do a day's walk and you get to a place called Newberry. Uh, when you get to Newberry, there's rooms to camp in and over there, now there are several different ways to go from here. You can either, of course, like you're gonna be camping night, but you can either continue on Route 66 or that way there's heads on pikes human heads on pikes. This way, there's two human head skeletons sitting on the ground. Well, no, we have to do 66 because fucking yeah. Ian Dune will lose his mind if we don't. Well, and you will too. I mean, I don't know if you want to do this all over. <laughs> okay, so we continue on 66. No problem, yeah. Careful watches are kept that night and such. Uh, and in the middle of the night, give me a listen roll. It's your watch. You're sitting up. Everybody else is asleep. The I, meal I is hear like, nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not a uh, bumble, but I don't hear anything. The meal attempts its listen roll to become skittish and try to run off. <sighs> so the next day comes. <laughs> if you ignore it, it goes away, you think happily. And right, where were you? Ah. You then walk, uh, you continue on. It's two days hard walk through the fucking desert. It's at that point that you begin to run out of water. Give me a survival desert roll to make everything better again. <clears throat> fucking take a check and learn if you don't already have one, you horrible person. You're like, oh, this is quite easy. We just have to dig the water, then we run through this multi-layer strainer that I made here, and we should have plenty of fresh water. And the guards look at you like, the guy looks at the girl and he goes, this monster really knows his shit. She's like, it certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> they figure you're a desert monster. They're very slowly starting to narrow down the kind of monster. The, you hate kobolds and you're a desert monster. Mm -hmm. You think he's a sandworm, the guy says? She's like, a little tall to be, or a little short to be a sandworm. You guys. <laughs> I'm telling um, you, I'm human. They believe you. Moving on. After <laughs> Ludlow, fortunately, you've got plenty of water now. Oh, hail the sandworm, she says. You guys continue on Route 66. Um, you cross through two days of mountainous desert to reach a place called Baghdad. Um, here you find something unusual. There's a bunch of fucking brilliant silk tents and such. Um, oh, you also passed uh, while you're on Route 66 in the distance, smoke in dis the distance as though from cooking fires, but... 
you'll have to investigate that in your own time. Anyway, in Baghdad, you run into a, a kind of an Arabic feeling camp. It's got music, it's got belly dancers, people with drums and such. And uh, uh, you guys see that in the distance and aren't quite sure what to think. Men, women, acrobats, jugglers, etc. No mimes. And that's like, well, we have to go through it because we're on 66, right? It'll take you right by it, but you do need to camp, and it is uh, early evening. We might as well camp there and uh, reprovision if we can. All right. You guys head over there, and uh, uh, the guy comes out, and he's got like a, a beard and a mustache, and the beard comes to a little bit of a point here, and he says, please, you are welcome in my encampment. Stay the night. Food, wine, dancing, women, song, all of it can be yours tonight. Okay. He looks a little bit creepy and a little bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. He's in super good shape. As we're walking, I say to I say to them, I say, don't overdo it. They nod. Has your monster sense telling you something? No, I mean, this is just, it, it's, you know, you know, this is a little bit too good to be true out here. I agree. Um, one of one of the people who appears to be some sort of servant comes up and says, Chang Sha bids you join him at his table. I go and I go to his table. The other two people are staying with their fucking principal. They know how to fucking bodyguard if nothing else. And he's like, I want to go to a table. And they're like, no, you don't. You, you stay here and eat rations. That way, if the food's poisoned, you get to live. He's like, but I we want to go to the table. And they're like, no, no, the monster will go to the table. And he says, so no problem. You go to the table and he's talking to somebody else. He's like, is it truly your wish, brother, to test yourself in such a manner? He's like, yes, yes. It's just this huge black guy all muscled. He's like, I do wish it. And he's like, very well. After we continue, after we finish eating, then you shall have what it is you desire. And he's like, thank you, Chang Sha. And Chang Sha looks at you, and there's like just a variety of fruit and vegetables and things. And he's like, what is it you desire? To know more about the universe that we live in. The big dude kind of rolls his eyes like, yeah, I want maybe. And he says, I see. Chang Cha says, you are a seeker of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you believe that knowing about the universe without is the most important? Knowing about the universe without helps me within. This is wise. Several people play wildly on their instruments and stuff to punctuate this. Give me an etiquette roll as you are having a pretty formal feast. No. You suck. Well, you thought it was a sit-down orgy for 87. You didn't know. So uh, They're not impressed with your table manners, but they don't say anything because they are really, actually, do they blow their etiquette and go, you fucking slaw? No, no, they make their etiquette. You feel vaguely bad about being you. But monster is is what monster eat, you know. <laughs> so, and after dinner, they uh, the two go out and they have a martial arts duel of epic renown. The big, hulking, muscular black guy eventually dies. And uh, Chang Sha says, I hope in death you find what it is you sought, my friend. He cries out over his corpse. And then they go off and he says, Beltal, please tend to our guest. Drop dead gorgeous lady who looks a bit shy, yet insatiable approaches you. How goes? <laughs> she takes you to a tent and slowly closes the curtain on the camera. Okay. It goes well, you think, the next morning. You wake up, but you're sleeping on the sand. No sign of the camp, 
the animals, the couple hundred people. Fortunately, the asshole that paid you to be here and the two bodyguards are also waking up and looking around confused. You did you did get laid and have a bath though. You feel much better about life. Okay. That was bizarre. The the downside is nobody else got a bath. So you now smell them. Oh well. Yeah. That so, won't last long, I'm sure. Yeah. So you guys continue on after this bizarre encounter. Uh Let's see, as far as tongue has burst out, at Ludlow is, wait, did you already pass Ludlow? Mm-hmm. Did you? Wait, Ludlow, or, well, because I'm past. Needles. Center. I don't know. Hold on, let me check something real quick here. Ah, Ludlow is after Barstow. So, Basically, now it's a one-week odyssey through the desert. This is the hardest part. Fortunately, your monster skills allow you to survive in the desert. You can smell water like, or some shit. Uh, just let, give you a quick pass-through of uh, some things that you see. Uh, there's a, a big fucking rock in the distance. It's kind of, It looks like an impact meteor crater, uh, ancient and huge. That's called Amboy, or as I have written it, Amboy in the fucking desert. You then continue on Route 66. You did spot something weird. Spot hidden roll. Got it. You thought at first it was just fire. Then you thought it was moving fires in the distance. Then you said, holy shit, it's bears on fire, wandering around in the desert. Weird. But nobody really wanted to leave the road and go fuck with that. Then you go to a place called Chambliss, fucking nothing. Essex is a few ruined houses. Eventually you get to a place called uh, Fenner. It's uh, fucking nothing, but... Um, <laughs> You do uh, are approached by a group of a dozen people. The uh, couple of them have crossbows. All of them have like various hardcore like chop weapons. And the leader has a necklace of fingers. He wants Toll to pass his, through his land. The dozen or so people, honestly, you are an awesome fighter. You're thinking they are not. The leader might be a bit tougher and stuff, but the rest are what you classify as cannibalistic rabble. I don't know if you want to fight, though. How much do you want? 200 silver coins. I don't think we have that much. Take a card. Hmm. Give me a bargain roll, because if you had just handed it over, combat. Sure, here you go. That's nothing. I don't make my bargain. All right. They charge you 172, which is the number that they believe you had. They're happy now that they have stripped away the last of your money. They go off to be cannibalistic somewhere. The guards with you are fucking happy about this. They're not wanting to fight if they don't have to. You continue on. At, that was Fenner that you met the cannibals in. You then continue on to a place called Goffs. G-O-F-F-S. You almost got excited, but not quite. Seems to be all desert. I.E. giant sand trap. Golfs? G-O-F-F-S. Goffs. Oh, Goffs. Yep. You thought, uh, doc, the doc thought it was golfs too, and then you realized you were in the sand trap and your excitement waned. And, oh, that means the green should be coming then. <laughs> and it actually does. Uh, <laughs> around a place called Needles, it's on the Colorado uh, River. It's the last town before it crosses the Colorado River into Arizona. It's a prosperous town. Um, 
Yeah, it was a hard fucking hike. By the time you guys get there, you're out of your monster-inspired water, or as they have come to call it, monster drink. Oh, jeez. And uh, yeah, uh, the the uh, amazing Yandun is really fucking happy to have made it here, and he says, "We will talk after a day of rest." Cut to. It's been a day of rest. All of your expenses and shit are, of course, paid. You guys are not in the best hotel in town, but certainly nothing to scoff at. The you you think that uh, Yandun probably saved for a couple years for this trip. This is okay. his big expenditure. He's not rich. He's not well liked, but he's actually a really nice guy. You guys have gotten on really well. Um, he, he doesn't have anything about him that's really especially annoying to you. He doesn't scream. Um, he's happy. He's easy to talk to and shit. It's pretty much just his smell. But, you know, considering how much you guys worked and sweated and not worked with chemicals and shit, that fades after a while. So, okay. yeah, he actually, he, he seems like a decent person. And he really, he thinks, he thinks very highly of you. And he says, all right. There's only one thing left for us to do. We must walk the mystic maze. I hope it's not the sewers. Uh, no, it's over there. He points and it's like a field set up that has like this weird maze thing on it. Okay. And when you look at it, you have a strange vision of your mind of a burning spider web. And you don't know why, but then it fades again. A burning spider web. Yes. <clears throat> what do you see when you look at that? It was just for it was a second and just near my... Basically, he says, I just see the maze. They, they uh, piled up dirt into different patterns, and we must walk upon it. Hmm. Okay. I cast my spell before we go. One, Which spell? Two. Oh, your your fucking got it. Face. Yeah. <clears throat> he says, "All right, now let me talk to you, man to monster." Man. Yeah, right. That's what I said. And <laughs> he says, "Now, this next part, about half day out of town, is the Mystic Maze. We have to go at night. We are we're gonna have to wait a day or two for the moon to be right, because we have to do it in the full moonlight. And we have to successfully dance a certain dance that we'll have time to work on. And if we don't do it... Are you it, a necromancer? No, I'm an alchemist. Okay. And if we don't do it correctly, then we got to walk the Route 66 all over again. Okay. In order to do it. So, thinking I want to try it first. Because if I explode or something, then, you know. But you can do it right afterward, okay? Okay. It'll just be us out there. Fortunately, we don't have to be naked or anything. I don't want to see all your monster parts or anything. So. Okay. Monster. So, uh, <laughs> he says, okay. He, he teaches you the, the dance and stuff. Basically, he'll go under your just general dancing skill. It's not a complicated dance, but unless you have grace and rhythm and shit, you'll fuck it up and then have to walk this all over. And he says, we will talk again after the dance, and I will instruct you on the rest because there is more. Okay? Uh-huh. Great. He goes out to try to make the most important role of his life. You guys go there. Pretty much just you guys. Uh, the, the bodyguards are... Actually, no, they go out, too, to keep an eye out because, you know, bodyguards. So he's going to attempt his role, and that's when you discover he is hero point rated. Hold on. Oh, he doesn't need it. I was, I was going to spend an assist five on him, but hey. Oh, no, he fucking made it. All right, yep. Yeah, he dances it, and he looks relieved. He's like, oh, thank goodness. And he says, there are some that dance this so badly that they may never attempt it again. Mm, okay. Good luck. He says, this one will be for monster kind. 
<laughs> moves aside to allow you to attempt to dance the maze in the moonlight. All right. And I, do the, moonlight. I do the dance in the moonlight. Good luck. It all comes down to a dance roll. Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm a naughty GM. Got it. Yay! Odd shit happens to you that did not happen to the other motherfucker. Why? Because nobody loves you. So, you do the dance. Um, okay, do you wish to mystically travel away from here? Yes or no? I.e., you've just discovered this is a gate. Would you like to use it? Sure. Right. And that's end of adventure. <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't get to find out the rest of what uh, this guy was going to tell you because you have gated away. Um, yeah, we will see where you end up. That should be fun. Um, I already know. Yes, I do. But it's end of adventure. So please discard any cards you don't want and uh, draw new ones. And uh, take an extra card for bravery in just gating the fuck away. It's like, ha and it shows like the two bodyguards and Yandun gaping. And then one of the bodyguards looks at the air and goes, I guess the monster was no longer needed. And so he was able to go back to where his kind lives. And the other two nod sagely. <laughs> As you and Yandun's like, you know, it's weird. I, I was beginning to think he was human. I was just joking with him. But now, now I know he is a monster. <laughs> All right. I have patriotism. So, Viva la France! Viva la France! <laughs> well, I was a bit surprised you uh, went in to try to murder them and stuff because, you know, damage comes slow, especially when it's you going... <laughs> Ow, ow, please stop. Ow. I thought I, I would really hoped I was going to be sneakier than that, is what it was. And then I wasn't. And then it was too late. I should have spent pause on being sneakier instead of yeah. combat. But yeah. what can you do? No worries. Well, it was a good game, sir. Go ahead and do all your skill ups and shit. Nope. Oh, I'm going to end the recording unless you have anything else you'd like to say to people. Dynafire.